stays with those who work for their dreams, says YY Noodle King Mr. Vinod Chaudhary. Mr. Vinod Chaudhary is a different billionaire. वो अपनी कमाई के बड़ा हिस्सा फिलांथ्रोपी में स्पेंड करते हैं। हाल में नेपाल के एर्थक्वेक में बहुत नुकसान हुआ। मिस्टर चौधरी ने थ्रू सीजी फाउंडेशन स्पेंड ह्यूज अमाउंट्स इन रिलीफ वर्क। मिस्टर चौधरी जो नेपाल में रहते हैं एक ट्रू ब्लू इंटरनेशनल बिजनेसमैन हैं, जिनके ओवर 80 बिजनेसेस इ उनके businesses include banking, telecom, hotels, infrastructure and education. Mr. Bino Chaudhary is helped in his empire by his three young sons. So let's catch up with him as he's visiting from Nepal. Mehu Neva Jain, welcome to Z Business and welcome to The Big Idea. Hello, Mr. Chaudhary. Welcome to The Big Idea. What a pleasure. What an honor. You're here straight from Nepal. Firstly, I must ask you, Mr. Chaudhary, you're third generation. But you have defied that myth that the third generation generally loses it all. How have you done it? Well, I mean, I am third generation. Yes, if you look you at, are. if you go back to the history, uh, from where my grandfather started some 120 years ago coming from Rajasthan going all the way to Nepal but you know really in a relatively big way the journey had just started so you can put it that my grandfather and father laid down foundation. a solid foundation Correct. you know which was yeah. which needed mm -hmm. a different level of energy mm -hmm. to be taking it taking it forward Correct. Correct. and that's what one was destined to have done over the last 40 years. I mean, and it's amazing. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but at age 18, you took over the helm of a fairly modest, successful company. And where you've taken it? I mean, it's, 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 it defies logic. It's dreamy. It, you know, the quality is almost um, surreal. It couldn't have been easy, sir. Well, I mean, you know, size is relative. Yeah. So it's success, isn't it? Yeah, very relative. I mean, but I've always said that despite coming from a small country, yeah. this small man from a small country always had big dreams. The first billionaire of Nepal, how <laughs> modest you are. <laughs> I think, you know, at the end of the day, I've also believed that there is no monopoly of a big company or a big country or a yeah. someone coming from a big family, well-known family Beautiful. or someone who's gone to, yeah. you know, schools like B schools like the Wharton Harvard or whatever, Wharton Harvard. Stanford, you said I mean, it, you know, sir. You don't just don't, yeah. it's all, it's a, it's, it's the hunger right here mm -hmm. and it's the vision here. Right here. And if you can, if you're supported by the right set of circumstances, people, yeah. I always yeah. believe that meeting the right person at the right time right. is the right equally important is, yes. at the right moment. Yes, yes. So it's all and rest yes. a little bit destiny. Too. Destiny. Well, I want to add in, I mean, I'm backtracking a little bit, but you made a very interesting comment in one of your interviews where you said, yes, luck plays a huge role, but beyond the component of luck, there's a lot more involved. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, luck probably does that finishing gives you that finishing touch. You know? Yeah, yeah, beautiful. You know, like if you're yeah. a golfer, you may hit a beautiful ball when yeah, sometimes yeah. it just touches the hole. Sometimes it goes in and sometimes exactly. it goes out. <laughs> good one. That's yeah. a good metaphor. Yeah, so, so, so it's very, that's where so the luck is. Yes, yes. Great but metaphor. luck can't take the ball to the hole. Beautiful. What a metaphor, Mr. Chaudhary. Actually, I want to ask you, when you started at the age of 18, your toughest moment in the beginning? Oh, my God. It Share was a nightmare. Us. I mean, you know, I was not why, mentally why? prepared. Uh -huh. You know, I was running with a friend of mine, the first discotheque of the country. Like anybody else, you know. <laughs> At age 18. The, the priorities were different. Who had dreams of being a chartered accountant. <laughs> yes, and I wanted yes. to come to go to Mumbai God. to do my CA. Mumbai was a city, you know, which was like a dream city. Oh my God. And then suddenly the life changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I realized that my whole world crumbled down in terms of my dreams. Correct. Oh, you personal that level because you my father feel. was had to be uh, you know wow. completely uh, sort of taken a back seat mm -hmm. and the people who he had entrusted and I've written this in my autobiography you know they had different agendas oh. so 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 it was a 180 degree turn oh my God. 
and then uh, and then there was very little choice so it was really not a matter of choice uh -huh. it was a responsibility it was Correct. an obligation and also uh -huh. you know some somewhere deep inside there was a sense uh -huh. there was a sense of doing whatever it takes uh -huh. to not let my father who was unwell at that time after having spent perhaps 40 years of he started even younger than me my, when my grandfather used to go and sell clothes in the rana palaces sometimes yeah. he used to carry those physically you know so he had a dream of his own size that's what propelled you that's huh it. your father absolutely yeah. i must tell you sir in all the people we've interviewed for the big idea everyone no matter where their father comes from it's the father who propelled them i have no doubt about it when you started that time at age 18 what was the energy that propelled you in each step of the way was it why why noodle king that was the first big fat break what would you say was your first big no fat break? not really you know i mean before that we were in the business of importing and exporting the garments i mean we had put together which was a very well-known department store in Nepal. Okay. You know, Nepal yeah. used to be the shopping yeah. hub for Indians. Yes, yes, yes. Hong yes. Kong and Singapore were foreign Correct. countries. Far behind, exactly. Okay, Nepal was not. Uh, uh, people used to come to Nepal yeah. to go to Prashupatinath, yes, to yes, go and yes, play at course. the casino and to come and shop at Arun Emporium. <laughs> I did do that 30 years ago. I yes. remember that. You're you right. remember Arun Emporium, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay, sir, so, yes. so that was a... Hmm. So we took that to the next level okay. and then we produced and I must give credit to my father, you know, he was very much the leader. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the first biscuit factory of the, of the country competing mm -hmm. with Britannia's and Parley's. Reversing the whole process, we used to get biscuits from India, Correct. but we started sending biscuits out to northeast of India. And then mm -hmm. that followed starting a flour mill and mm -hmm. plenty, so much more flour to do. My God, what do you do with the, that? Yeah. We had to find something. Yeah. And, and that's as how luck would have it, while traveling back from Bangkok to Nepal, mm -hmm. saw boxes of a product, you know, the big on, the, on the bag and the big fat idea. Unbelievable. The, the YY, idea. that's how I was born. YY Noodle King. Sir, on that note, we have to take a little break. Folks, break time. Please don't go away. When we come back in conversations with Mr. Bino Chaudhary, the chairman of the global conglomerate, the Chaudhary Empire. <laughs> Back again in conversations with Mr. Binod Choudhury here from Nepal. He's the chairman of the Choudhury Conglomerate. So, chairman of the Choudhury Conglomerate, number one uh, on the Forbes list of Nepali businessmen, Mr. YY Noodle King and many, many other avatars. But share with us Mr. YY Noodle King. No, so as I was telling you the story, you know, I mean, what do you call that? The feasibility study or the big idea the yes, name of your yes, show yes. was born on top of a baggage belt at the airport in Kathmandu. Okay, we had to do something yeah. with, which revolved around the flour, wheat flour milling. A and that's how the idea was won. And today, you know, that's one single product from Nepal, which is sold in more than 30 countries. We, are, we have eight manufacturing plants in India with a 20% uh, market share. We are starting in Middle East, Africa. So, you know, this yeah. also proves the fact that mm. ideas can be born anywhere. That's beautiful, yeah. That's what's so inspiring. What's the USP of YY? Is it the taste? Is it that you just have perfected the art of distribution? What would you say? I think it is primarily the product. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's, um, a, it's the versatility of the product. You know, it's the only product yeah. which you can have as a munch, have as a soup and have as a meal. Okay, the versatility. And, and, and moreover, huh. you know, the there are three generations mm -hmm. of young people who've mm -hmm. grown up with YY. Okay, and they are our ambassadors. Yeah, yeah, we, like you, I'm sure you've yeah. no, never seen YY is being advertised in a typical sense, in, at least in the national yes. media. We don't do that. Why so? Why do because you? I think it has evolved organically. It has yeah. grown. Yeah. People who've been consuming YY are all over the world and they are the ones who ask YY. YY is YY today because of the pull factor, not the push factor. <laughs> I love it. Good one. Well stated. Now, are you a connoisseur of YY? Or any of your family members a connoisseur of YY? I'm a vegetarian. And you know, 99% of YY, YY is non-vegetarian. Non but I have eaten vegetarian YY. You have. And yeah. it's good. It tastes good. Yeah. Okay. So from YY, if we just systematically take 
you know, the way you built your global empire, what was the next vertical you worked on? You know, food is very big. Yeah. I mean, and it's not only YY because YY is so well known. Yeah. We do the entire range from all kinds of processed food, snacks and beverages, yeah. ranging from the, Say you know, the breweries to water Correct. to Tetra Pak to, you know, the whole range, which is a fairly big and very fast growing. Mm -hmm. And we do all our own brands. You know, that's important. I've right. always yeah. believed that you need to work to In build your own brand. The second big thing that happened was in financial services sector. When Nepal was opening up, Nepal opened up in its banking industry much before Correct. India did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so we acquired a significant stake from the government of UAE in a, in a bank which is called Nabil, which is the largest bank of the country. And it's one of the most one of the most profit uh, one of the most professionally managed bank which is now trying to grow beyond the territories of Nepal. You know, which is uh, bigger than many international banks which are active there. We are, of course, we're also active in insurance, leasing, money remittance. That's a big business in Nepal. And, but when we decided uh -huh. back in 1990, you know, that when Nepal was also posed with some political issues, the Maoist insurgencies, yeah, yeah, and also more of, moreover a desire to take like any family or any group wants to do open new frontiers okay. where do we go and what do we do so we created a company out of Singapore which is today which has taken the shape of CG Corp Global that's what we call our okay. global face yes. and with our offices uh, in most parts World of uh, over, yeah. Middle East Africa Asia of course India including a hotel in New York we teamed up with the Taj and I think so that's what I gave. That's what I take yeah. as a big break, uh -huh. as in terms of our international expansion. Uh -huh. And as, uh -huh. as destiny would have it, we landed up picking up a, you know, major stake in Sri Lanka as well as in Maldives. Turned around along with our partners, who are the most distinguished hotel company, the way I find them. You know, created the iconic prop brand called. The Exotica, Taj yeah. Exotica in Maldives, which Correct. the whole world talks, talks about, Correct. followed by a second one. And the journey of uh, the hospitality yeah. Just kind moved of on, it. you know, yeah. and then we went into the wellness industry, the mm -hmm. farm in Philippines, Correct. 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 many people know, the yeah. wildlife industry, hospitality yeah. in the yeah. Madhya Pradesh, the Mova Kotis and Correct. with Correct. the by bringing in the yeah. South Africans. Correct. The well known. What would you say has been the toughest uh, point in your business career? Today? No, if you look back. Well, I think probably most people go through that challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a dream bigger than your size, wow. then one of the challenges that you are faced with mm -hmm. is building an organization of world class people. And that doesn't happen unless you have a size. And size doesn't happen unless you have world-class people. Yeah. So that's a like that, that's right? a situation where most companies mm -hmm. get dissolved. The managing the process of graduating from a family-owned and run company, company to a professionally run company, which is capable of sustaining and growing worldwide, exactly, and globally, oh, according to me. Yeah. And that's what we where we also faced but yeah. we managed that and today uh, it's a different world I have to add in and you're saying that Mr. Chodi but, and you have three boys so that's very interesting for you it must have been that much more difficult yes that much more challenging well three boys having three boys of course can be a challenge I can no, tell you in terms of demarcating yeah. the business you know satisfying everybody it's, it's, keeping it's, it's more, more, no yeah. I mean I would say that having three boys first of all to align them huh. in a single objective you know exactly. coming from three different Thought processes, uh, mindsets, thought process, everything. Mindset, yeah. styles, lifestyle. Exactly, everything. Yeah, exactly. everything, you know, to bring them yeah. aligned because you can't force, <laughs> you can't create an entrepreneur. Yeah. You have to be born. Wow, okay? I like that. Right? Really, so you, you feel that to, way. I, I want to go back and to they that. Have to, they have to be equally passionate. Yeah. You do feel you that you can't create an entrepreneur. I it's totally inbuilt. Believe, I, neither I believe that a B school creates an entrepreneur. Oh. Okay. Okay. I think knock. every management yeah. practice, every yeah. management style yeah. has its own inherent, yeah. I mean, you know, DNA, inherent so DNA yeah. of yeah. the specific business as well mm -hmm. as the environment where you operate. Oh, okay. And every organization has its own USP. Yeah, yeah. There is no set theories or, let's say, principles so, that you yeah. can just pick like up and adapt. You can box adapt. in and say that's what You works. can do yeah. that. Okay, so, so interesting. Having yeah. three boys, yeah. in my, in my, yeah. to my mind, was a huge opportunity. 
to 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 yeah. to to make them steer different ideas and different thought processes yeah. and particularly in three different geographies yeah, yeah but, that's another thing exactly. but you know these young minds hmm. full of energies also need a Hardest huge thing. huge uh, sort of uh, stock of maturity yeah. and experience yeah. and so to bring that professional yeah. team to blend that with them yeah. and have a have a team which is hmm. energetic vibrant but hmm. same time very prudent and very practical yeah. is a very critical task beautiful beautiful what a learning curve but we have to take another break Folks, break time. Please don't go away. Back again in conversations with Mr. Vinod Chaudhary, the first billionaire of Nepal. But Mr. Chaudhary, I feel actually having met you and and chatted with you, that's really being myopic. I think there's a lot more you're doing, which I think I want to discuss. That one is the foundation. You know, the Chaudhary Foundation is doing a lot of great work, especially in light of the earthquakes in Nepal. I want you to expand on that. Well, I mean, all of us know that today Nepal is facing yeah. a challenge of, this, of a magnitude which you know, nobody, nobody can imagine. It's far bigger than yeah. the size of our uh, capability. It's yeah. far bigger than what we can handle. You know, 10,000 people died. Just That's please. also official numbers. You never know. Probably hundreds of even. It could be even thousands couldn't even be rescued. They're still probably hidden somewhere under the debris. Seven hundred thousand homes completely damaged and unlivable. Six to seven thousand schools, and I don't want to even talk about the infrastructure. And but these sir, are in you know the very I'm difficult, very difficult territory. These are mountains. You know, the monuments, the homes, the beautiful heritage. You know, uh, architecture that I've seen growing. The culture growing of Nepal, up. the ethos. I saw yeah. crumbling down right in front of my eyes. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge emotional setback. It's a huge physical setback. So we, we as a group, I mean, you know, it's, it was not a matter. It didn't take us an iota of a second for us to decide that this is the time when we have to put together whatever we have yeah. in terms of our ability to mobilize our own organization and people and friends both in Nepal and abroad and get into the task. Stage one was relief. Our own family members were going to different villages and mountains. Wow. Stage two That's was amazing, working on sir. construction of shelters. Mm -hmm. So we partnered with uh, Seeds. It's a mm -hmm. NGO which is also doing good work in mm -hmm. JNK and mm -hmm. Uttaranchal yeah. yeah. okay. to build these mm -hmm. transit homes Home, which are called yeah. shelters. Okay. Which is still yeah. usable for three four years oh, wow. at a cost of about seven to eight hundred dollars yeah. per piece yeah. and we brought in price waterhouse foundation you know because i mean you know seven hundred thousand homes even if we are going to do yeah. ten thousand yeah. and hundred schools that's mm -hmm. tip of an iceberg yeah. so we need to mobilize the international yeah. community mm -hmm. and i'm also taking the opportunity of your show wow. to share this with your audience it's too important exactly. you know to, to, yeah. to come and team up yeah. I mean, you know, we are not looking for uh, any kind of a credit. Right? Mm -hmm. Credit will go to who does it belong to. to Price water out house is yeah. there to define the processes and yes. to, to make sure that it's the all our money as well as the money of others are well the, spent. Exactly. Well okay? spent and goes in the well right direction. Well spent reason. and goes in the right yeah. direction. So yeah. I think mm -hmm. this is something Collective effort, which yeah. where which is taking a lot of my personal time, the time That's of my family, wonderful. and I think we made a serious progress. That is. You know, I'm so happy to share with you. Yeah. Perhaps the first lot of the homes will be delivered in next two weeks' time. That's quick. Yeah. Less than yeah. two months. So, so because we want to do it as many homes as possible before the monsoon creeps Wonderful, in. Wonderful, Mr. Chaudhary. That mm. is really something to feel so proud about. Thank and you. And so happy. That's Thank amazing. You. And I'm so happy that wow. you know it was. Yeah. Um, I mean, we that could participate. Do, we yes. could, you know, the foundation can, uh, is doing great work. Which we're being recognized. This initiative is being recognized. Yeah. Jack Ma from Alibaba. Dot com. He wanted to partner with us to build 1,000 homes. Yes, I read up on that. I mean, so there are, I mean, I'm going on the 14th to Hong Kong. There are two events being organized by the media community as well as by the business community. And they want me to come and talk and share. Because everybody, you know, yeah. this is, this has seen the level of polarization, the level of culmination of okay. sympathies and desire to yeah. work. Never before. Yeah. Can you believe China and India having joined hands, hands to build Nepal? Yeah. I, I can't get over your passion for this. I mean, that itself is so riveting. 
amazing. Really, I'm, I'm that so. Just so beautiful. But I'm also conscious, you know, just for having said all this, mm. what we've been able to do or what we are doing yeah. is yeah. peanuts. It's a huge challenge. It's a I huge think it's gone. People ask me that, oh, what's going to happen to business or what's going to happen to new investments? Yeah. My answer is that, look, Nepalese people are very resilient. Wow. We've seen setbacks one after the, the other. other you know we've yeah, seen right. the fall of different political regimes and the, the, the monarchy we've <laughs> seen the fall of you know the whole palace, palace. whole royal family being killed or whatever yeah, getting chilled, okay yeah. we've seen the maoist insurgency right. for 15 yeah. years we've seen the rule change swing from a monarchy to yeah. a maoist led government gone in the back parliament. to a bit of a demo democratic but Nepalese come back yeah. so nepal has that and i have every every hope that this is going to bring Nepalese back together into a united nation wow. you know a country which is cohesive which is going to work with the world and take Nepal to the next level. Mr. Chaudhary with you at the helm and with you guiding I'm sure it's going to be that way. It has been one of the most riveting inspiring and motivational interviews ever. We wish you all the best Mr. Chaudhary. Thank you so much. In and all I must your say present and future endeavors. One of the most uh, pleasant and one of the most rewarding experience for me too. Thank, thank you. you because you've done many interviews I take it as, as an honor. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you very much. They say there is a shift in consciousness that is about to sweep the planet. The shift has the power to transform your way of life for the better, evolve how you work, grow, create and connect with others. We wish you all that and more. Stay blessed. Mehu Niva Jain.